my topics basically will stay the same on this video. Um, what I talk about is non-duality, which is essentially oneness. I talk about psychedelics. I talk about very absurd things to the common person. I'm aware most people will turn my videos off within the first 10 minutes because they hear a crazy guy telling them they're not human and there is no earth. And most people through an awakening need steps. They need uh, a path or a uh, conspiracies, things like that, that lead them into the inevitability. But what I do is I rip the band-aid right off. There is no self that awakens, and that's what you awaken to, is, is the separate entity you thought to be yourself. Because the truth of the matter is everyone subconsciously playing out two characters every day of their life and they have no idea the boundary to our reality is our deepest fear that's as far as we will see through the mind your deepest fear that's your boundary And your deepest power, your greatest power, you project through your eyes every single day. You live two identities every day of your life. You have no idea. It's a subconscious. But every day we project our fear, our greatest fear, into our reality. Even if we don't think about that fear, it's there because... It is our boundary. So, for example, when I tell people there is no human being, this entity that we have assumed ourselves to be as human doesn't exist. But this is why I call it absurd. I say it's absurd because to the average person, it doesn't make any sense. It's very common sense that we are human, that we're human beings. And something I hear very often which I feel so misunderstood on when I tell people, you know, we're not human. I say, I know what you mean, but... I know what you mean, but we're still here having this human experience. But we're still having a human experience. Indeed, we're having an experience, but human experience, this is not. The experience that is taking place right now is the highest, is what some people call heaven where they await, they hope for after death, the bliss. That's the experience that's taking place. Bliss, but we don't know bliss because we don't know ourselves. And that's why we have so many struggles and, and stresses on the surface level, from our job, from our relationships, from things which beyond the surface mean nothing. The assumed identity that we decorate and that we buy things for doesn't even exist. We worry about what logos we display on ourselves because we're not shopping for us. We're shopping to be seen by everyone else. Again, proving the fact we don't know ourselves. Because the inevitability is no one seeing the version of you that you're displaying for the world. What I mean by that is before you leave your house every day, you may look in the mirror one last time. Let's just make sure everything's intact. My hair looks great and everything looks good. You have your image presented, presented that you present to the world. And this is the image that you think people are seeing and judging every day. When someone's rude to you, it's because of this image. Or it's because of this image. Something about the image. 
but in fact it's not. Because if someone judges you, they're only judging themselves. If someone sees you, they're only seeing themselves. And that's where the topic of non-duality comes in. There is no body and earth. There is no human experience. There is simply an experience going on. And since you, this entity you assume to be human, has come up with the word body and the word earth, it's very obvious that you are the wielder of duality. You have created the above and the below. You have created the inside and out because you've created the word. You've spoken the word and you've assigned it definition. But we don't, we don't realize this. We remain hidden from ourselves, and again, it's not our fault. The, our deepest fear is what keeps us from moving beyond the boundary into the point of no return that I talk about. And in this point of no return, it's very confronting to you that once you see your truest self, you never unsee it, which means you can never pretend to be human anymore. And this is what answers people's question when they ask me why or how am I so certain with what I share? How am I so confident with what I know? And this is how I've experienced the experience beyond being human. I've seen myself beyond the, the thought of myself, which was being human, which was being one name, which was being the personality, which was being the memory, which was being the mind. You lose all these things in death. And the reason you don't die is because all the things you assume to be yourself that began through a birth never was. You collect things and attach them to your identity. We make up an identity out of our collections through the memory, through the mind, through experience. But beyond all of it, you are the presence which does not enter and does not leave. It does not come and it does not go. Which brings me back to the point of there is just an experience here. And that experience is presence. And the source to presence is silence. But the human does not know silence. The human exists and hides from itself through its words. This is why the human's biggest fear, or one of them, is accepting that you are the only one here. We think it's scary to think of other life forms invading our, our Earth or another alien species coming to invade our, our space. No. Our greatest fear is that nothing is coming. There's nothing out there. It's just you. And that's what scientists are fighting with. They can't accept it. The scientific community will not accept it. Surely there must be something else. But the reason this terrifies us is because we are looking at it through the lens of being human, that which you are not. This is why it will terrify you. You're, you are pretending to be something you are not. You are pretending to be a species you simply are not. And herein lies all struggles and, and misery through the dream world of, of human, being human. And that's what every problem surfacing is attempting to show us. Hey, you're not who you think you are. Hey, you're not who you think you are. But we don't pay attention because we exist in comfort. See, we don't believe in something if we can't touch it. This is why NASA and these agencies have 
I wouldn't say lied to the people. But when NASA and these agencies hit the wall in space, they then had to come up with an explanation to give to the people. And they couldn't just tell the people you're nowhere. They couldn't just tell the people there's nothing out there. Surely people would lose their mind. The system and the reality that we know and exist in, where cars travel and commute and you go to work and you're late for things, would dissolve. It would be gone. So NASA and these agencies have to find a way to slowly disclose to the people that the entire universal model you've been given has been constructed not only through a computer, but simply is replicating the very thing behind your eyes. So when you see these pictures of nebula, purple, pink, all type of colors, and they have no shape to them, it's what's right behind your very eyes. When people talk about seeing the void, the void which is the absence of anything but the presence of all things, the reason it's the absence of anything is because there's nothing to be seen. There is no mind being distributed. The only reason we see things, objects, people, places is because the mind. That's the only place we've ever been. And see, this goes to my next point. When you tell someone they're nowhere, it makes no sense to them. But what we don't realize is chaos is our truest nature. And that's all we've ever done in this dream world is made sense out of our chaos. So that's why we have to assume we're naturally in some place, a position in space, right? Because surely something can't be nowhere. But this is why I say, know thyself. Once you know yourself, it will be very easy to understand nowhere. Because then you're understanding all place is the mind. There is no place to go beyond the mind. There is no place existent beyond the mind. There is no land to be seen beyond the mind. The mind is all places, and it's the only place you can ever transcend. So for the people who are talking about governments enslaving our consciousness and trying to lock us into a video game or all these things, the mind is the only place you can ever be locked. And you hold the key. That's the funniest part. Your belief and your boundary keep you obeying in this belief. Nobody's forcing you to believe it day after day. It's you that believes in it, and it's you that believes in it because it mirrors your foundational belief of who you are. This is why people believe in government and systems. See, beyond the surface, no human governs anything because, again, we're not human. And when you know who you are, you know nothing here needs governing. Except for the species that is pretending to be something it's not. That needs governing. Why? Because you've made up the entity human and so made up the, the system government. So the two entities you have created, human and government, are just keeping themselves in balance and check. But they're both made up by you. The same presence, the same awareness. You are what's behind them all. Your answer is not in space. Because again, think of it as <clears throat> a blank TV screen. That's what space is. There's nowhere to go. And I understand people will disagree and, and argue and fight till the death. But it's naturally so. That's the defense mechanism of the ego. Surely there has to be other things. But it goes back to my point. Our greatest fear is you are the only one here. It's comforting for us to create entities Nocturians, Arcturians, Pleiadians, and they are they have ships in the skies and they're watching us and they're governing this and they're watching that. It's scarier when you realize it's all you. But at the same sense, it's empowering. 
This is what people want, though. They want the sovereignty, they want the power, without having to be it, God Almighty. See? And that's the, that's the catch of it. That's what Alan Watts talks about. Everyone wants to know God. No one wants to be it. And that's the great catch. But at the same token, as I said, it's a trade-off. It will terrify you initially, but only empower you in the end. And as I've stated before, once you know yourself, there is no fight. Even if military or government wanted to issue martial law t tomorrow, tonight, and they carry me out of my home in shackles on this video, still cannot touch the core to my being. This is why Jesus did not fight when he was being tortured. He displayed the ultimate knowing of self. Some people may say, well, that's ridiculous. That's asinine. Why wouldn't you fight? But it goes back to the point. You don't know who you are. You may think the person executing you is getting the final laugh or say so. They have no idea who they are. They have no idea the literacy that who they are killing is themselves. This is why monks will not fight. This is why monks cannot use violence. They understand the literacy. <clears throat> not a metaphor. We're the same person. We're one and the same. This isn't a metaphor. This isn't some nice quote we decorate on our room. This is a literal Direct experience with reality, where you understand fully and see through your two eyes, there is not two beings here. I don't care if you're black, white, brown, yellow, purple, there are not two beings here. And that's the greatest trick of the self. That is the greatest trick you play with yourself. You hide through smoke and mirrors, through illusions. Now you see you, now you don't. Here you are, here you aren't, now you remember, now you forget. But the greatest catch is you're all of them. Danielle says, what causes all the dreams at night, every night, with no rest, for all my life? I don't know the answer to what causes dreams, but I can tell you, our dreams and this picture in front of us that we call reality are the same thing. The same imagery, the same senses, the same feeling. The memory may be a little distorted in dream, in the dream state, but the underlying principle of the dream state and the awakened state is, it is your presence. It's the same presence. You were there in sleep. You are here in wakefulness. And it's showing you something. That you are not what's bound to move or change. For instance, you're having a horrible nightmare, and you awaken from that. Your image, your setting, your surrounding just instantly changed, yet you remain. And what it's revealing to you is you are not this image. You are not what's changing. You are not what can be forgotten. At the end of all this life and death and reality, you will remain. And it doesn't matter whether you know you're infinite, you know what I know, you believe in what I know, it doesn't matter. You will be there. You will be present. You will remain. And it's not a you that you will recognize. Those who have died before death, I have died before death, I recognize basically what's I don't want to say next, but I recognize the self, the universal self, the fact that there's only one self, there's only one being, there's only one person. And this being is an entity of energy. It's not a male, it's not a female, it's not black, it's not white. It is the silent presence that we call this moment where all change, all things transpire through. But we don't attach to the moment, we attach to the things, the change, what's bound to
to be forgotten, what's bound by change. And therefore, reality is a tragedy. It's appearing and disappearing right before us because we're not paying attention to that which is not moving at all within us. In your dream state is where you can become aware that you are not what's moving. When you merge dream and reality, you realize no matter what, at the end of this, you wake up, you come out. Your presence remains. You may not have a body or anything to look down at or up at or have anything that can be seen. But you will remain, your presence, eternal. And I don't mean to say we die and go nowhere, because that's the impossibility. You can't die and go nowhere because you've come from somewhere. But that's where, what I'm speaking of, that which is not moving at all is revealing to you your true face all the time. Right now in this moment, there's nothing but silence. But we ignore the silence as a nothing. There's no sound. And the reason we need the sound is we exist in the words. We don't exist in the silence. And that's why silence disturbs so many people. They need music. They can't take the silence. They can't take the sound of their mind. Silence is our truest presence, is our truest nature, and that's what we're basically trying to prolong through all these distractions and video games and cell phones and all the distractions. It helps us forget and prolong ourselves a little longer we're not, where we're not in this moment. And what I mean by being with this moment is staying as this moment. That's the point of no return. You do not come out. You do not come back. That is meditation. That is how Buddha taught meditation. Buddha taught and told people who were teaching meditation. Meditation is not something you can do and achieve by doing it once in the morning and once at night. That's not how meditation works. Meditation can only transform you to your core when you do not come out of meditation. And the reason we say... You know, well, I can't just meditate, you know, forever, uh, then there would be no experience. It wouldn't be an experience you recognize. But again, the experience you recognize is words, sound, the illusion, smoke and mirrors, that which will disappear before your eyes at death. Get to know the presence. That's experience. That's experiencing death before death. And allowing you to see that you you are what's unchanging, unmoving, all pervading. You're everywhere. You're all of them. So back to my point. We don't really believe in things unless we can catch them, unless we can capture them. We can touch them. It's the same with Alice chasing the white rabbit. You don't know the white rabbit is really there or your mind's playing tricks on you and you're going crazy unless you capture it. You've got to grab the white rabbit and capture it, right? This is why NASA has, has sold the people on the belief that we have sent something to touch the sun and we've actually landed on the moon because this sells to the people that you have touched it. You have touched the white rabbit. It exists. It's there. And I'm sure you know what I'm going to say next. The sun and moon are very much there. But they're hollow objects. And any astrophysicists, scientists that has been pushed out of mainstream has directly said and proven already that these objects you call the sun and moon are hollow and they're not run by nuclear fusion. They're run electrically. It's been proven time and time again. The reason it's not mainstream is because of what I just said. If you can touch it, it's there. It exists. 
But once you start realizing that these things you call physical are, are hollow, they're not physically there, you can't touch them, it opens up a whole new can of worms for the whole space idea that they've sold you and your kids. You have to rethink the entire model, the order of the planets, your position in space, the fact that you're one little galaxy out of 10 trillion billions. Because remember, this is why we constantly keep creating these lies of more and more. There's other galaxies, there's other things, there's other nebulas, there's other people. Our deepest fear behind all this mind chatter is you're the only one here. And it's inevitability. It's inevitable. You are inevitable. But that's what we fight with ourselves on. Deep down, we all know. I get comments all the time, people telling me, I can't put what you say into words, but I know it in my heart to be true. Deep down, we all know. Deep down, it's, just, it's a knowing we all have. It's only us. It is our deepest fear. But again, that's why we get lost in the distraction of the phone, of the video, of the TV, of the news. To prolong the inevitability of ourselves, that it is us, and it is only us. There is no outside world, as you've been taught, as you think. We can only progress video games and artificial intelligence, or should I say, what we think to be video games and artificial intelligence. You can only perfect that so much until you are literally reproducing reality and what you've called a human specimen the whole time. So at the end of this, the end game is us progressing video games into us creating reality itself. Us progressing artificial intelligence until you have duplicated human existence. And that's what the Araboros is. You've, be, you've ended right where you began. You thought you were narrowing down where the human race came from, only to realize it's been you the whole time. You've bit your own tail. You end right where you began. The question and answer were one and the same the whole time. So long as we believe we're human, we'll need governing. And what I mean by governing is a government system, a system to tell us how to be and when to be and what to do. Why? Because we're not human. We're pretending to be a species we're not. That's why you see so many problems when you go out of your door, for instance. And I'm not saying it's only bad, but you see things like road rage, you know, people cutting in line. You know, it's all about me first, me first, me first. And this entire mentality stems from everyone being in a hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry to the next, to the next, to the next. And no one realizes that beyond the surface, you're not going anywhere. You know, you're not traveling anywhere. This is why I tell people who are doing chakra work and things like that, you inevitably have to realize that this is a dead end too. You inevitably have to accept the bitter pill that all spiritual work is a dead end. You may not like me for saying it, but I'm again, I ripped the band-aid off. If you want real results, real progress, and you're looking for an ego death, then I'm ripping the band-aid off right here. Spiritual practices only prolong the inevitability of your truest nature. They keep you fooling yourself and others that you're doing something you're not. And how do I know this? Because you're 
requiring a connection to be something you already are. You're creating a process to achieve your truest nature, which already is. It cannot be achieved. It's already done. So we can convince ourselves we're doing something to get there. But that's why I tell people, careful you don't get there too soon. Because I've hit that wall. And you know what happens when you hit that wall? It's almost like a dark night of the soul. Deep depression. You hit that wall. Deep depression. And it's a part of the spiritual journey. You know. No one can avoid that for you. But just expect it. When you hit that wall. When you realize you've made it there. Wherever you thought it would be. Nothing changed for you. Why? Because your truest nature already is. And you've mistaken yourself as this identity, which is attempting to achieve a, a, a mission for itself. But you're not even yourself. You're not even who you believe you are. Therefore, this mission you've created doesn't mean anything. Again, not if you're trying to get there. And when I say there, I mean that final thing, whatever you're reaching to. It's like the crown chakra. I tell people that all the time. What physically or mentally happens to you or around you when you think or convince yourself you've hit the crown chakra? Because you can give me explanations all day and I'll listen. But again, I know the answer. You're convincing yourself that you have to do something to get there when you're already there. And so understand, I'm not against spiritual work or practices. But I'm about getting people there instantaneously through the realization of themselves. To make people realize you have nothing to do here to reach that. I like what Rupert Spira says about meditation, but he says meditation is when you go to sleep or when you fall asleep awake. So you're you're you've fallen asleep, but your eyes are open and you're still talking and having conversation and you're moving about, but you're asleep. And let me explain what he means by that, because a lot of people would say, well, if the lights are off, then why not just die and be dead if, if you're not there? What it means is you're not identifying with the personification of yourself, of the identity, of the mind, of this separate entity that is constantly speaking as the mind. Because the mind is always going to go, naturally, from day to day, place to place, event to event. The mind's always going to go. But you don't personify yourself with it. You don't attach yourself with it. You recognize it for what it is, and you know its source, which is silence, which is your presence. Which goes back to the dream state that I was talking about. You have many dreams, you produce many places, many experiences, many situations. Some good, some bad, but when you awaken off that pillow, you remain unchanged and the same as, as when you went in. Life is no different. The duration may feel longer, but remember, time's an illusion. So if you wanted the reality of it, your dream state is just as long as this life expectancy that you think to be 100 years, 90 years, 80 years. The same thing. Duration is, is a, an idea of... Um, or it's, it's a way of how, how much data we're collecting and whatnot. That's, that's, you know, what influences time or duration. But there is no actual time beyond the mind. So what he means by you go to sleep while you're awake is you are not present anymore as the ego i'm trying to explain this in the right way it's it's the point of no return that i talk about where 
once you go into this point of no return, you never come out. And that's what Buddha talked about. Meditation only transforms you when you go in and do not come out. Those who, you know, try to meditate in the beginning of their days and at night, that's meaningful. And I'm not saying, you know, you don't get results that way. But you will never achieve an ego death this way. It may cleanse the mind. It may give you some silent time. It may get you restored, you know, calm. But it's not going to allow you to achieve an ego death this way if that's what you're doing meditation for. Because meditation is not an act. It's not a practice. It's not a doing. And that's the, the key to meditation is it's not a doing. It's, it's connecting you to the direct experience of just being. Never again will you have to think, should I do this or that, or should I go here or there? You're constantly in the moment of flow, of just being, of existence. So when you meditate, when you truly meditate, you're in meditation forever. And that's what Buddha told his disciples. I'm in my meditation from now unto forever. Till the moment I die, which death does not exist. And the reason he said he was in his meditation until death is because, again, presence always is. It does not come and it does not go. So the only pieces of you that will go, that will die, are the thoughts, the words that you exist through. The thoughts you have of yourself that, again, are words, compiled words. Words don't exist. So if you exist in words, if you need sentences to say who you are, you need thought to tell you who you are, then you surely will die. You have yet to experience death, but understand that is all death is, is the realization that all these thoughts and knowings of yourself and reality are going to go. Concepts of day and night, concepts of time, concepts of family, concepts, all concepts that have been made up that we exist through die, they go. And when you get to the bottom of why, it's because there is no separation. No place is separate from that place. No event is separate from that event. No time is separate from that time. No person is separate from that person. It's all the same singular one presence happening all at once to itself. There is no separation. See, what psychedelics does is it dissolves the mind. It dissolves the words. Everything that, that, that is held in the mind dissolves on psychedelics. It cannot exist on psychedelics. The mind dissolves everything, which is the words, the thoughts, the images that you know. So, for instance, if I say a word, you'll instantly produce an image in your mind. That's exactly what is dissolved in the a psychedelic state. There is no image to be produced. There is no thought to be produced. There is no word to be produced. There is just the full embodiment of presence. And it doesn't matter what direction you look, you are just a witness of presence. And that's why people express this state as a void. But it's not actually a void. It's our self, but we don't recognize this self because, again, we've only known ourselves through what is moving, what is changing. We bounce who we think we are off of the outside world and everything that's moving and changing around us. But when you have no separation, 
no outside world, no influence to, to guide you as to who you are or where you are. You are fully embodied in presence itself, in the highest existence. And you understand existence for itself as it is. There is no beginning or end to existence. There is no organic life and artificial life to existence. So again, we must rethink who we've assumed we are. Because we think we have it all figured out and we've etched it in concrete. We're a human, which is organic life. And this is a machine, which is artificial life. But we need to, to get that out of our minds. Because we've already etched it in concrete and solidified it. That's absolute. We figured that out. We're moving on. But it's time to go back. Because we're not human. We never have been. And once you start realizing you're not human, you need to start looking closer at what you're calling the machine. Because then you'll start having a different lens and realizing you're not witnessing a machine being produced. You are witnessing yourself being produced. And one of our most sacred questions is how we got here. Who put us here? Where was the beginning? And again, our deepest fear is that it is us the whole time. There is no creator as we've created, as we've thought it out to be. But you have to understand, us creating a creator will only be filtered through our own expectation, will only mirror who we think we are. So we give the creator all the attributes and all the powers that we assume we don't have. But again, We've assumed we don't have these things. We've assumed we're without because we don't know who we are. And so we project these powers, we project these things outward beyond ourselves. And whether you, you see it as an entity, as an energy, it doesn't matter. It's projected beyond you. And the moment you have that separation, now comes the ego's mission of let me acquire a, a connection. How can I better connect or be this energy when you already are the whole time? So understand, spirituality is not about doing something or achieving a practice. It is about realizing your truest nature and that you are already achieved. There's nothing you can do here. And that's why acquiring the world and all its materials will never fulfill you. It will do the opposite. It will depress you, deplete you, and drain your energy. Because the inevitability is you already have it. And I call it it on purpose. Because it can be whatever you want it to be. We're all looking for it. You may have a different image or a different thought or an idea of what it is. But we're all looking for it. But whatever the case may be, you are the it. It's you the whole time. And that's the greatest trick. You are playing with yourself. The Hindus say if God wanted to hide, it would choose man to hide in. That would be the last place man would look. And look at us. It's the last place we're looking. We've scoured the stars. We've scoured the oceans. We're running ourselves mad trying to find... The human origin, the hardest pill to swallow, is it does not exist. There is no human origin. That's why you can't find it. That which we have assumed has begun never was. Therefore, how can you die? How can you achieve death when what you've assumed to be yourself never was? Death is a misconception based on the misconception of ourselves. Death mirrors the idea we hold of ourselves. We hold too that we've birthed, we've begun. And that's why I have never born, 
never died on my arm right here. So when they lay me flat on that table, the coroner can read, never born, never died. And he can say, what a jackass. This guy, he's clearly dead on my table, and I can laugh at him. This is my favorite tattoo out of all of them. Never born, never died. Just because it's, it's, it's basically my entire philosophy on my arm. And I, I, I get asked about it almost every day. And the reactions I get are priceless. Because people look at me like I'm an idiot. Never born, never died. And they say, I'm looking right at you. you you're born, you're right here. You're here. I'm like, indeed I am. Yes, I am. And I don't try and explain. Because again, this it's not something you can explain to the average person at a store. Or at, you know, some pass by, you know. It's not something you can just tell to someone abruptly. You know, they have to be open-minded enough and at that stage where they're ready to begin hearing things like this because those people who are newer to spirituality are going to chase those trending topics and trending things of spirituality, which is the chakra work, the crystals, the, the healings, the, the doings, and all the practices those are the things. But like I said, I make these videos for people who want to achieve that next step. You've done all the practices. You've done all the doings. You've watched all the YouTube videos and still nothing. That's why I make these videos. Because I was you. And I was so frustrated in my search about six years ago. I overdosed to try and kill myself. Obviously, it didn't work, but that's how desperate I was to know the answer. I didn't want to die. I wanted to know the freaking answer. I watched every YouTube video. I read every book. I listened to everybody speak on spirituality. I tried so many practices. I felt nothing. I had no change. I even convinced myself along the way a few times with some practices that I was doing something, that I was noticing changes in my life. But I had to be honest with myself, because only you know if you're being honest with yourself or not. And that's where I started becoming depressed, because I knew deep down I was not being honest with myself. And I was impressing other people, because I was fooling them, but it was making me feel worse, because I wanted the real thing. I wanted real results. I don't want to have to get on a camera or get somewhere and pretend that I'm connecting to something or I'm doing something. No. I want the direct experience. And through psychedelics, I achieved that. I broke through that point of no return. And I have not been back since. That is how the man you see here before you is able to to make all these videos. When people ask me how I know all these things, how I'm so confident, I don't mean to sound confident, I just know it. I've seen it, I've experienced it. No one can take it away from me, no one can persuade me otherwise. I've directly experienced it for myself. Everything that I thought I was and everyone I thought was separate to me died. I have not come back. That's the point of no return. And it may sound dark and sinister when I, when I say that. But understand, you must lose everything to find everything. You, you, you assume everything is yours here. It's my mother, my father, my house, my, my, my. But then you start losing these things and it makes you realize nothing is actually yours. And that's the dark part. Nothing is yours. But then the laughter afterwards is nothing is yours. It's all you. It's a big twist. You must lose everything. You must lose everyone to truly find everyone. If you hear people speak of heaven, they talk about this beautiful place where everyone's united and everyone's one. And everyone is connected as this one thing. Well, that's the same thing as an ego death. You must lose everyone, everything, to truly find everyone, everything you've been searching for. 
and the only thing keeping you is separation. And the reason we believe so heavily in separation is because we believe so heavily in our ego. It's the ego's mission from day to night to defend itself, to protect itself. Which means when you see stories of government conspiracies or government trying to enslave the world or they're trying to take away my rights, that's the ego's favorite game. Because again, it keeps the game prolonged just a little longer. It makes this feel a little more like reality. But remember, this is surface level. This is not reality. Reality doesn't change. Reality doesn't move. It is because of this changeless reality, this presence, that allows you to comfortably know reality as you know it. So before you fall in love with the dream, understand that love is your being, is your core. And all this love is awaiting you beyond your limitation and belief. We're so afraid to lose ourselves, to lose the ones we love, but we don't understand what's awaiting for us. This realization within ourselves. Home is not four walls surrounding you. Home is your presence. And like I said, there is no land beyond your eye. What that means is your presence is everywhere. Everything. So what that also means is home is everywhere. There is nowhere you can go or be that your presence is not. That's what all permeating means, all pervading. You're all places, all, everywhere. No separation. And when you have no separation, there is nothing that can be known. And when nothing can be known, you have achieved all knowing. And that's paradoxical in itself, but again, you are the wielder of duality, so you are the paradox in itself. And just to touch up on the point of no return, because I've had a few people tell me, you know, I've experienced that, I've experienced that, you know, but I came out, and I'm like, there's a reason it's called a point of no return. And trust me when I say, when you enter, and I don't even like using the word enter because it gives people a bad idea. That's why I do the quotes. But when you enter or embody this, there is no but. There is no anything. It's just when you know, you know. It is that simple, it is that literal, it is that powerful. Yeah, see, if you've done ayahuasca, then you fully understand what I'm saying. People who have done psychedelics better understand what I'm saying. And I'm not saying you can't understand what I'm saying if you haven't done psychedelics, but those who have done psychedelics have directly experienced reality dissolve before their eyes. And you understand that the world and the entity you thought was yourself that you projected into it has never existed. But that's what the point of no return is. You, you don't come back. And it's not something where, oh, I'm going to come in and then come back out. It's called the point of no return. That's what I refer to it as. But like I said, those who have been faced with that point of no return fully understand what I mean. And before you even approach it, it's made very clear to you that if you enter, you will not be coming out. It is very clear. It's one of the most sacred 
experiences I have ever had with myself. The moment I fully embodied this point of no return, this presence, Tyler, the, the, the image that you see here, didn't exist. There was no Tyler. There was no description of myself. There was no past of myself, no memory of myself. There wasn't even a thought of myself. At last, allowing me to see into my truest nature. Allowing me to see that these thoughts I produce will come and go. Why do you want to exist as a thought? You are source itself. Why do you want to hold on to a thought? A thought of existence when you are existence itself. It's humorous when you realize how small we're pretending to be here. It's humorous. And what's even more humorous is everything we fear is simultaneously the answer to everything we are seeking. That fear is only there to keep your boundary up. That's why the church has created a Satan, a, an evil entity. They were creating that, that mirror, that wall, that people would be terrified to look into. It was reverse psychology. Because, And I said this all the time, but the clock strikes midnight if you look into that mirror and, and actually discover what's behind it. Because then you'll realize your truest nature. And that these two entities made up by the churches are one and the same being. And that being is you. Governments feature a two-party system. Well, lo and behold, your brain is a two-party system. Coincidental? I don't think so. So, are you for the Democrats, the right side of your brain, or are you for the Republicans, the left side of your brain? Pick one and go to war. You pick one dominantly and go to war with the other. It's a game you cannot win. But the people don't know that. That's why you see them rioting. That's why you see them talking about revolutions and destroying governments and all these things. The system. It's harder to look within yourself. Easier to blame. Easier to point the finger. That ego will not allow us to look within ourselves. Why? Because we say, well, I'm not the one signing the papers or issuing this executive order, or I'm not going to war with this country, or I'm not doing this. It's deeper than that. Again, it's time to rethink who we've assumed ourselves to be. Because that's where we're speaking from. That's the frequency we're speaking from. It's who we've assumed ourselves to be, which again, is an illusion. It doesn't exist. So it's quite obvious everything spoken from this entity will likewise be false. Because the whole foundation is false. And this is why I say you are inevitable. Because it is inevitable. That the world and the system and the entity we've created for ourselves all crumble.
Alright, I'm gonna probably get off here. I'm getting a little tired. Yeah, I figured. I just had last minute I got tonight off, so I figured I would just make a video. Why not? Alright. Hopefully this was, um, informative for some. Hopefully this, uh, help some people make some realizations um, let me know though in the comments if I should upload this video to my YouTube or not if I if I get a few people to say you know it was worth it then I will if not then I'll just leave it on Facebook um, but yeah thanks to everyone who was on here subscribed and uh, I'll see you guys another minute thank you